Welcome back to a little discussion of alkanes for Chem 230, Introduction to Organic Chemistry. And I've had a little problem with the recording shutting off after just a short while of recording. The last video was cut off when we were about to explain the CN H2N plus 2 formula and how that works out for different alkanes. So, for example, propane, the root prop means three carbons. So that would be C3, and in our formula, Cn to the H2n plus 2, three carbons would mean n equals 3. So three carbons. And if you wanted to draw a Lewis structure for a propane, you'd link the three carbons with single bonds, and then you'd just add enough hydrogens to fill the octet rule for every single carbon. And if you wanted the formula for propane, then you could just simply count that you have three carbons and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. So C3H8. And where the 2N plus 2 formula comes from is each carbon here has two hydrogens attached to it. Right, so for every carbon, there's two hydrogens. So that's where the H2N comes from. But then the end carbons have additional hydrogens on it. And since there's two ends, that's the plus two. So C3 means N equals three. And now if you go two N plus two, two times three plus two is eight. So the two times three is the six hydrogens, two for each carbon, and then plus two for the ends equals 8. So C3H8 makes some sense. Just given the Lewis structure, CnH2n plus 2 makes sense. I often have trouble understanding formulas unless I can see where they come from. Now writing out the Lewis structures can take some time. So butane, C4, 4 carbons, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 2 is 10. So we'd have 10 hydrogens on the 4 carbons. And now drawing the Lewis structure can be a little tedious because we have to draw 10 hydrogens, four carbons, and all the bonds that connect them. So a little tedious. And you can imagine that when we start getting into larger molecules with 20 or 30 carbons, writing out all the atoms in there would be very tedious. So we came up with a system, skeletal structures, which make this a lot quicker to write. What we're going to do is write just the skeleton of the structure, as the name suggests, where each end of the line is a carbon, and each bend in the line is a carbon. So you can see this is one, two, three, four carbons for the butane. Bute is the root for four, four carbons for butane. And first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, four carbons, that's the skeletal structure. So each end of the line and each bend in the line is a carbon. And then we assume that there's enough hydrogens on each carbon to fill the octet rule. So the skeletal structure for butane looks like this. Propane, three carbons would look like this. Ethane, C2H6. It's almost not worth trying to draw a skeletal structure for this for a couple of reasons. One is just drawing the whole Lewis structure is very short. There's only eight atoms in there. But then the skeletal structure would just be aligned with the two ends, and that would be easily mistaken for just a dash or line on the page and not a skeletal structure. For methane, CH4, carbon attached to four hydrogens. Again, very quick and easy to just do the Lewis structure for methane. I don't even know what a skeletal structure for that would look like. I guess just the dot, because there's just one carbon. So usually for the very small molecules, you won't think about skeletal structures, but as you get to larger molecules, the skeletal structures will be much more commonly used and much more useful for writing out a large amount of information with very little time. So methane, Meth means one carbon, CH4. 
ethane, eth means two carbons, C2H6, propane, prop means three carbons, C3H8, butane, but means four carbons, C4H10. So there's four simple alkanes, they're Lewis structures, and for two of them, useful skeletal structures for propane and butane.